welcome to lecture number 4 of module 2. In lecture 3, we saw the capability curve of synchronous alternators and also we saw the various transformers and their uses in electric power system. In this lecture, I will discuss about the capability of transmission line. So, before going to see the capability of the transmission line, it is uh, important to see the various transmission lines means in terms of their length and what are the various representations so that we can discuss in detail. Uh, a transmission line as you know it has resistance, it has uh, inductance, it has a capacitances and all these parameters are distributed in nature. If you see this uh, single line diagram where this I have written this is R is the resistance and again this is in per ohm per kilometer means it is a once length is keep on increasing the resistance is also increasing. Similarly, the inductance of the circuit of this transmission line and the inductances are formed because we are having the different phases and then there will be current is flowing of the different magnitude and due to that the flux uh, magnetic flux is produced and then we have the inductances. Similarly, we have the capacitances because the conductors are charged at the different potentials. So, there are some capacitances of form and it is a throughout the transmission line length. So, this is the capacitance and that can be calculated using the different formulas, the different concept. Again, we can calculate using the GMD and GMR concepts. Another term is also associated in the transmission line distributed parameter that is your G and this is called the conductance. This is representing a resistance means it is a, a loss component and this loss component basically represents because we are having the insulators and why we require the insulators because the bare conductors are hanged over this uh, towers with the help of the your insulators and there will be some leakage currents which will be flowing on the surface of insulators and there will be some loss. So, it is also distributed because the towers are distributed throughout this length of the line. So, this G is also a distributed parameter, but for analysis purpose we normally go for the different representation for the different line and then we can classify the lines depends upon the length. First one is your short line. Short line is the line which length is less than 80 kilometer or you can say 60 miles. In that case, what we normally do, the charging that is a C and G here, the charging capacitance as well as here, the conductance is ignored and only we take the series impedance and that impedance is represented here as a lambda, uh, lambda parameter. Means here it is R Z, it is your R, capital R I am writing here, your omega, this I am writing this L. So, this is basically in ohm R in per unit, but it is not per kilometer because we multiply by the length. So, this is the lumped parameter means this resistance here as well as the here the reactance due to the inductance it is the complete of the total transmission line. So, if it is a per kilometer then you have to multiply by the length of the line. Another category is your medium line. Medium line normally represents from 80 kilometers to it is 160 kilometers and in some cases it is up to 200 kilometers it is analysis is performed using concept of the medium line. In the medium line also we normally represent the distributed parameters in terms of the lumped parameters means we have to lump the total uh, series impedances are this your in, uh, admittances, but here in this case we cannot ignore this charging capacitances means we cannot ignore the capacitance value and that is why we include here this y in this formulation. So, again we can lump now you know this uh, sunk part is distributed. So, this sunk can come in the intermediate of the line, it can come at the both end of the line. If you are it is represented in the, the intermediate of the line, you will see this is called the T representation and it is called nominal T because here we have made some assumptions. It is not equivalent T. I will discuss uh, equivalent T here in the long transmission line. So, this you can see just like a T here and that is why it is called nominal T representation. Similarly, we can also now if you are the sunt admittances, if you will separate half of the separately here one end here another end and the series impedance here the complete is lumped in the between then it is called nominal pi representation and then we can go for the various analysis and now this calculation becomes very simple. 
Now, what are the various calculations? Normally, we go for uh, calculating the performance of the transmission line, and the performance of the transmission line is defined as the here the voltage regulation, voltage regulation. And another is your efficiency of the transmission line. So, we can calculate the losses in the transmission line, we can calculate this uh, your uh, sending end voltage, receiving end voltage, and then we can calculate the regulation. However, in the long transmission line, if your line length is more than 160 kilometers, in some cases 200 kilometers, then it is not possible to take the lambda parameter, and that calculation becomes very, very erroneous. So, what we do, we go for taking the distributed parameter and using the distributed parameter concept, we can define the transmission lines in terms of their A, B, C, D parameters. We can even though go for the equivalent T and equivalent pi. Means, here this is you can see this is a T. What we do normally, if you would here this is a T of course, this is we are taking here T and we are now representing in terms of lumped, but taking the consideration of the distributed parameter. So, here your z prime, it is not here, here z by 2 here, similarly here z by 2 and here it is or y prime. So, this y prime, z prime are basically related with your distributed parameters. Here z and y are the lumped parameter means that is multiplied. Similarly, we can go for this uh, pi representation and that is called your equivalent pi, because what we are doing this distributed parameter we have represented and then we are trying to represent that line in terms of equivalent of uh, pi, so that is why it is called equivalent pi. So, here what we will get instead of this, we will get here, uh, here we can get this pi like this, this is your pi here. and here your y by 2, this is a prime, here y by 2 prime and this is your z, z prime again. So, we have to represent in equivalent form and then it is called the equivalent representation of the transmission, long transmission lines. Now, the various constraints, various limits, those are imposed in the transmission line and they are the restricting parameters that we have to look into the matter before transmitting the power. First one is the voltage limit. The voltage limit is nothing but is related to your dielectric limit. The voltage regulation limit, that is how much change in the voltage from the full load to no load, that is also very important. Another is your stability limit, that is a whether we can, how much power we can transmit over the transmission line without losing the stability of the system. Another is your thermal limits. Thermal limit again related to that if you are keep on flowing more current, there will be some losses and therefore, what will happen due to this losses, there will be more sag and etcetera and then we will see. So, all these four limits we will see in the next few slides. To avoid several things here, especially the stability limits, we should go for the compensation of the line and we will see the various compensation techniques also and based on that, we can improve the stability of the long transmission line. So, let us see the thermal limit. So, the transmission line thermal limit, the excessive temperature due to the loss, what is loss if you are going for more current in the conductors, so there will be more current, more loading means more current and if there are more current, then what will happen? I square R loss, R is the resistance, so I square R loss will be high and that may result in the expansion because the, there will be temperature rise and the result tend sag of the conductor causing decrease clearance of the ground. What will happen normally if you will see this is your tower let us suppose and this is your transmission line which is a, a form of the catenary. If the temperature will increase what will happen the, this will go like this and if you are a ground here then what will happen here the ground clearance is reduced and there may be possibility of the flashover, there may be possibility of the human damage and that is not required. So, the excessive temperature rise due to the I square R loss normally limits your thermal limit. Now, another question why the temperature, excessive temperature? Once there will be loss, there are several conditions that is uh, it is the lines are hanging in the sky in the uh, you can say air and always once the loss is there, it is dissipated in the air. But if the uh, loss that is more than the dissipation of this uh, loss uh, that heat less, then what will happen? There will keep on increasing the temperature of the conductor. 
uh, once it will keep on increasing then we will have the sag and that is the expansion and the sag that is very very dangerous. The temperature extremes have an annealing effect causing the reduced mechanical strength of aluminum. At the same time it is not only sag means if the temperature increases then this has the annealing effect means it will reduce the mechanical strength. Normally we never use the simple aluminum or the copper conductors we have normally we use basically different type of conductors like ACSR we use that is a aluminum conductor steel reinforcement to give the more mechanical power strength of the conductor. But the aluminum which is used normally we use the aluminum for the wear conductors and the coppers are used in the cable because the cable aluminums are cheap. So, aluminums are used. So, here what will happen it will reduce the excessive temperature the strength of aluminum. Since the thermal time constant are large no doubt the thermal constant time constant is very large. So, it is useful to distinguish between the steady state and the transient thermal rating because the transient thermal ratings means if there is a sudden change sudden increase of momentarily increase in the current how much loss is there. So, the temperature rise will be slow it is not so instantaneous will be increasing and another is steady state that we can transmit the power without losing much sag and also without losing the mechanical strength of aluminum conductor. Thermal capability is a function the how much thermal capability of a conductor is basically depends upon the several factor and one is very important that is ambient temperature. What is the temperature outside if the especially if it is a cold weather then you can go for more current because this heat dissipation will be more means outside temperature is also very important. Wind condition because if wind is there so this heat which is around the conductor that is a generated due to the current that will be flowing and there is a good way of the conduction of heat. Size of conductor means size whether it is very thin very large if size is larger the again the area will be more and the more dissipation of heat will be there again the temperature rise will be less. The conductor type again the different type of materials are used and those materials also what is their thermal uh, uh, what is the thermal resistivity and based on that we can also decide what will be the temperature rise. Geometry and the spacing between the towers means what is the towers what is the geometry the three conductors because if there are the three conductors very close then heat generated by these three conductors will come into the picture and again there may be more rise. So, if it is spacious then again the cooling will be again better. Ground clearance is also very important because the ground clearance if there will be more uh, temperature rise the clearance will be reduced and then therefore, we cannot operate the line successfully. Uh, typical steady state thermal specification of conductors used for 400 kV overhead transmission lines the 400 kV just I am going to talk it is for the Indian condition. This ACSR as I mentioned it is aluminum conductor steel reinforced means what we do we use here the steel inside and around this we use the aluminum conductors and it is called means there may be even though not only one layer of steel it may be the one or two layer of steel and over and above we can go for here the aluminum conductors. So, normally this type of conductor is known as stranded conductors means here the conductors all are touch touching here just like here and the equation for this the number of conductors in any particular layer is basically given by n square minus 3 n plus 1 means if you are using 1 n is equal to 1 means only one conductor that is in central conductor if you are going for the two layers then you will find here uh, seven conductors will be around that. Normally uh, for 400 kV we use the twin moves means we use the bundle conductor of moves and that is a here conductor 520 square mm the here the conductor area just I am talking 520 square mm normally used. One thing is very particular uh, you can note here the moves normally in this 50 hertz cycle the conductors which are used the name given are based on the animals. However, in the 60 hertz uh, supply system especially in the UK uh, USA and the Canada they use the birth name like in India this uh, various conductor names if you can see this moose, panther, zebra, dog. So, all these are the basically animals and based on the moose if you are any person is in the moose conductor automatically the area is decided. So, for 400 kV we use the two bundle conductors here 
always if you find most of the cases you will see if the two conductors in one insulator it is flowing then it is called the uh, twin moves and then it will be most probably 400 kV transmission line. So, for an ambient temperature of 40 degrees Celsius and a maximum conductor temperature of 75 degrees this ampacity, ampacity is nothing but the ampere capacity and that is approximately 700 ampere of con this one conductor. Typically as I said the two moves conductors that is the bundle conductors is used in 400 kV line thus the total uh, ampacity is twice of 700 that is your 1400 ampere for such a line. If a triple AC that is all aluminum alloy conductor of again the same square uh, area that is 520 square mm is used higher conductor temperatures are compared to the ACR are possible for an ambient temperature of 40 degrees Celsius and maximum conductor temperature of 85 degrees Celsius this ampacity is 850 ampere. So, in our country mostly we are having the conductor of ACSR or it may be a, this triple AC and that is why the maximum temperature allowed here is 75 or 85. The thermal rating are a strong function of ambient condition as I said of course, the ambient condition means outside condition what is that means if there is a rainy season, whether it is a windy, whether it is a cold season or hot season, this thermal rating depends upon the seasonal and also you can say ambient conditions, the condition outside the conductor. It makes sense to evaluate the actual ampacity during the real time operation, especially due to the season, so season day to day or hour to hour. So, even though hour to hour also this varies because in the night it may be the cold and the daytime it may be hot. So, again the how much you can load that depends upon the time to time again hour to hour day to day or season to season. Another limit is the dielectric limit and that is basically nothing but your the voltage limit. The exceeding the dielectric limit maximum electric field strength results in the failure of insulation causing faults. Electric fields may be excessive due to the various regions, regions may be due to the over voltage and that over voltage again may be of due to the two regions, one due to the low loading condition or no loading condition in the AC transmitter system and that is called the Ferrant effect, I will discuss the Ferrant effect or during the abnormal conditions like the lightning strokes or due to the faults. So, we may observe the over voltages. As I discussed the conductors in the transmission line, they are the bare conductors and they are hanged over the transmission line and again the transmission line as well as the transmission towers they are isolated with the help of the insulators. So, these insulators must sustain the voltage that is uh, your conductor is having means your operating voltage will be withstand by the insulators. So, we have a various type of insulators normally we use the string insulators for ESB transmission line and again the utilization of these string insulators are not 100 percent means the conductor which is near to the bare conductor is stress highly compared to the conductor which is near to the tower. So, let us see the Ferrant effect. The Ferrant effect uh, is nothing but in the long transmission line or cable, the receiving end voltage is greater than the sending end voltage during the light load or no load. Means, here your transmission line, this is your receiving end voltage this is your sending and voltage. So, during the light load or no load, light load means very less load you can say negligible load then this your V r means magnitude of V r here will be more than what you are supplying and what you are connecting and this is known as the Ferrant effect. Why it is so and this is nothing but due to the charging of the transmission line. This phenomena is very prominent very more in the long transmission line where the charging is very, very high. We can see again this effect by uh, mathematically uh, formulating this, the sending end voltage, this V s is equal to your receiving end voltage multiplied by cosine hyperbolic gamma l plus z c that is a characteristic impedance here your I r is receiving end current here I r and here it is your I s 
and sine hyperbolic function. If your I r is 0, means if this current is 0 or very less, then we will have the V r that is your sending and voltage will be equal to your uh, V s that is a this is V r sorry this is the receiving and voltage will be equal to your sending and voltage divided by cosine hyperbolic gamma l and this value is always more than this V r means this cos hyperbolic gamma 1 is greater uh, less than unity means your the V r will be more than the V s in this value can be unity because the gamma is very small value. So, this value can be unity or it can be less than that. If it is unity, then it will be your V r that is receiving and voltage will be equal to your sending and voltage. But for other cases, if transmission line is long, this value will be not unity and it will be less than that and finally, your receiving and voltage will follow this and this is called Ferenti effect. Now, this voltage if it is higher, then how to control this because if voltage is very very high so there will be flash over over the insulators and this line will not sustain and the protective system will trip this line so uh, deviation of the voltage beyond certain limit can also be considered to be an unacceptable compromise on the quality of the power being supplied to the customer if this voltage is as i said the voltage deviation is not allowed beyond the plus minus 10 percent in the most of the cases. In some of the cases, it is not allowed more than plus minus 5 percent. Again, it depends upon this which voltage we are talking about. For the distribution system, it may be 10 percent that is allowable, but in the EHB system, it should not be more than 5 percent. So, if voltage is more, again, there may be possibility that will damage the operators or equipments used by the customers that is also not allowable. So, we have to have some voltage limit means voltage should not violate the limiting values that is the lower limit as well as the higher limit. No doubt we know the higher limit will rapture the insulator that will be the soft circuit there will be heating and so on and so forth, but at the same time the lower limit is also very very important and that basically relate with the reactive power requirement of the system because if the voltage is low what will happen? then for the same more reactive power will be requirement will be there and there may be possibility the current in the conductor will increase and there will be more losses. So, if the Ferenti effect is there, if the long transmission line is there, so what we do? We use some reactors to reduce because the, if your transmission line is energizing after the grid collapse, then the receiving end load is normally it is nil. So, if you are connecting the sending end with the sun supply system, then of course, the send, uh, receiving end voltage will be higher and there will be possibility that your circuit breaker will be tripped due to the high voltage relay picked up. So, what we do? We use the various type of reactors and again we cannot put these reactors permanently for all the time. What will happen? Because these reactors normally absorb the reactive power and therefore, they will try to reduce the voltage. So, sometimes we do not want that these reactors should be permanently connected to the the line. So, what we do? We go for the compromise means some reactors are permanently connected, some reactors are connected when they are used when they are required in the system. For example, this first one is a reactor is your line reactor. If your transmission line is more than 250 kilometers, we use the line reactors means our transmission lines here let us go this is your transmission line and this is more than 250 kilometers we use here reactors at the both end and this is nothing but these reactors are your simply your inductor. So, and they are permanently collect, connected in the system that is why they are called the line reactors. No doubt here we use the circuit breakers again for the protection and other you can say maintenance purposes, but they are always connected in the system especially in the 400 kV transmission line if the line is more than 200 con, uh, kilometers we have to connect the line reactors at the both end of the line unless until if you are let us suppose you are having a generator here that generator may absorb and there may not be needed, but still if the generator as I said in the previous lectures that we should not allow generator should go in this uh, under excited because at that time any heating effect will be there. So, normally we put the reactors as well in this end. Another is called your bus reactor, bus reactor is 
again switchable and it is used when it is required especially when there is no load during the charging half peak loads we have to use the bus reactors and bus reactors you can see here we have to use one reactor here and this is your here with the switch. So, they are only connected when they are required into the system. Another is your tertiary reactor. Tertiary reactors even though when I was talking about the transformer I said there will be the three winding transformer and that third winding as I said it is used for the circulating the triple and harmonics current inside the delta connected winding. At the same time we can use some inductors and the capacitors because this is at the lower range. What happens here you can see if you are using here the transformer and this is your load or whatever the line. If you are using another winding here that is third winding here and we use this connection as a delta then that delta the third harmonics keep on circulating inside this delta winding and we can use here uh, inductor or a capacitor and then it will be used for absorbing or generating reactive power. This what is the advantage of this because this voltage is very very low, but this voltage are very very high and then we have to provide the proper insulation for that. So, that the uh, what happens if you are using at high voltage the cost of these equipments will be very very high. So, the voltage and reactive power flow in the transmission lines are affected by the line parameters, parameters your L and C your line length how long it is if line is short then almost uh, again depends on the charging whether including or not then it depends on that and the power transfer power transfer again how much power you are transmitting over the transmission line if you will see the voltage profile of a transmission line let us see here let us suppose this is your uh, I am talking about the length of the line this is your length In the transmission line there are two components, one is your reactive power absorption, another is reactive power generation. The reactive power generation is due to the capacitance and the reactive power absorption due to the inductance. In the transmission line if the current I is flowing then I square x is your reactive power loss in terms of absorption of the reactive power due to the inductors that is inductor basically formed inductor they are not we are not using the uh, lump to inductor it is the inductor due to the different current flowing the different phases. Another due to the capacitance we generate V square over X C or you can say here omega C this is a reactive power generated. So, the total loss here it is nothing but your I square X minus V square omega C or here X what is X? X is nothing but x is your omega L j omega this. So, here you can see one is absorbing another is generating. So, the voltage profile of a transmission line depends on your the current which is flowing there. For the fixed voltage here fixed capacitance and inductance because once a transmission line is designed there is no possibility is to change the L and C and thus it is always here it is the current V gives what will be the voltage profile of a transmission line. So, let us see here uh, this value is basically if this value is more your reactive power loss is more and, and that can you can say the I is more means that your line is highly loaded in that condition the voltage if you are maintaining the receiving and sending in voltage the voltage profile over the transmission line will be like this. Here I am talking that we are maintain the voltage profile here at 1 per unit here as well as per 1 per unit. Again in the reverse case if this value is more then it will be the here like this means it is the some voltage are very very high in the mid of the line what will happen the insulator which is designed for the 1 per unit or the rated volume if you are exceeding more than 10 percent or so then there will be so many flyovers and that will cause the line to ground fault and we do not want that. So, this is basically the line uh, loading is very very important in deciding the voltage profile of the line. So, this is the condition when your I square omega L it is your less than V square omega C. However, this condition your omega L is more than this, but if the voltage profile 1 if both are equal there will be no loss and that is called flat line means here in this condition both your I square X will be equal to a V square omega C. Uh, now, let us see another parameter that is very very important in deciding the loading of the transmission line and that is known as 
surge impedance loading or you can say normally it is very commonly used the SIL loading. Means surge impedance loading, let us see what is that. Before that surge impedance loading, the sum of the parameters are to be known before going further surge impedance loading. First let us define or see what is the characteristic impedance of a line. Characteristic impedance is defined as the square root of the ratio of series impedance to the stunt admittance and that is a complex quantity. So, the characteristic impedance you can see that is known as Zc that is a complex quantity. It is the ratio square root of the ratio of Z divided by Y. Now, here you can see this Z which I have used it is per kilometer this is also per kilometer. If you are using here for the total length total length then length will be cancelled here. I mean for example, that is also true here that is your Z L here and your Y L means L L will be cancelled. So, this characteristic impedance is independent of length of the line. This Z is no doubt this is the distributed parameter R per kilometer plus here this reactance of the line plus here G and here J omega C. The phase angle of a transmission line is usually less than 15 degree and that phase here what we can write this Z C it is nothing but your omega J beta. So, this alpha is called the attenuation constant and the beta is called your the phase constant and gamma oh sorry this is not uh, this value sorry this value is basically the Z C itself and here uh, we will see the letter this is a gamma is nothing but your alpha plus J beta and this gamma is nothing but under root your z y is called your gamma. So, this alpha here it is known as your attenuation constant and the beta is called your phase constant. So, this is your characteristic impedance. Now, if you will see if you ignore the losses of the line means if r is very very small and negligible if your g is 0 then we can see the characteristic impedance now become the surge impedance and it is represented at here the Z naught rather than Z C and this Z naught here I have removed the R and J component and then we will find L over C. Now, this parameter you can see once your line is designed L is fixed, C is fixed means your Z naught is fixed and this Z naught is independent and of your the length of the line at the same time this is a real term means here L over C uh, L is positive this positive means here we are getting the real term. However, this Z C was a complex quantity because here this complex and complex that will take it out we will get some complex component. So, the surge impedance is your pure resistance and it depends upon again what configuration of your line. So, it depends upon the line configuration and also it is means we have uh, this value is depends upon your L as well as C. Normally, the surges are of high frequencies and therefore, losses are neglected means for the high uh, frequency normally the losses are neglected. Thus, in the case of lossless line the term surge impedance is used instead of the characteristic impedance means for the high surges. So, it is that is why it is called surge impedance mean the surges are high frequency and the losses R and G are negligible for those high frequency. So, we can say it is for lossless line the impedance which is comes out to be it is a surge impedance. It should be noted that the surge impedance R characteristic impedance is independent of the length of line both impedances are independent of the line. Surge impedance of overhead lines and the cables depends upon the configuration of conductor and their spacing of course, you can see C and L they depends upon the radius of conductor as well as how much they are how they are spaced. Approximate value of the surge impedance for overhead transmission line it is approximately 400. Again it varies depending upon the configuration to configuration and also for the cable it is 40 ohm. The point why this uh, surge impedance for this cable is less that the conductors are spaced spacing between the two conductors is very very less and also due to that the capacitance here as I said your Z naught here it is nothing but your L over C. So, your L is small and C is very very high for the case of the capacitor cable because the capacitor value is very high for the cable because the spacing between the two conductors is very small. So, 
we are having this value is very very low and it is uh, 10 times lower. So, the surge impedance loading is defined with the help of the surge impedance and it is defined as here that is called P surge impedance because this is your ohm resistance is not resistance. So, the V square if the line is voltage is maintained to the V and here nominal voltage that is terminated with the resistance equal to the surge impedance of line it can be written as this means if a transmission line is terminated with the uh, resistance equal to the surge impedance then we will have the surge impedance power that is a P S I L will be V square upon J naught. Now, you can see this surge impedance can be increased by decreasing this or increasing the voltage. Again, the increase in the voltage is not possible because more increase the insulators and other construction costs and as well as the tower design etcetera will be very, very expensive. Same time, the Z naught reduction how we can reduce means you have to go for more uh, less and less spacing and also that may create the insulation problem and so on. So, so there is some compromise and we cannot load the transmission line more than its SIL loading, especially for the long transmission line. If the voltage in above equation is in phase, now again this surge impedance loading, how we can calculate this P S I L will be the per phase if you are using the voltage here, the line to phase, line to neutral voltage. And for the three phase, you have to multiply then by three. If you are using the line to line voltage, that V square here, uh, this V square here, if you are using the V line line, then the P S I L will be your three phase power. And if you are using V L N that is a line to neutral, then you will get the P S I L in this formulation, it is your single phase. The surge impedance loading is known as the natural loading of the line, which also indicates that it is maximum power that can be delivered and is useful in the transmission line design. To increase the power transmitted through a long transmission line, operating voltage of line can be increased or Z naught can be reduced. Z naught can be reduced either by using double circuit line. As I said, it is not possible to have the higher order uh, high voltage at the lower space because then again if you are using air as a medium, there is a possibility of the flyover. So, it is not possible. So, another uh, possibility that we can go for the double circuit line means we can have the two lines together paralleling paralleling and that may cause more expensive more cost and increasing the value of capacitance or decreasing the value of in the, uh, inductance as another possibility again for that we have to change the spacing between the conductors. Now, let us see the what is the power capability of transmission line including all the limits. Limits that is the voltage limit, your thermal limit and another that is the stability limit and we will discuss the stability limit here. And the power transfer capability of transmission lines is restricted due to mainly three regions as I said here the thermal limit, your voltage drop limit and the stability limit. Cables are even more prone to the thermal limit because of more limited possibility of the because of the limited possibility of the heat transfer because in cable you know you use the conductors very uh, the spacing between the two conductors is very very less at the same time the dissipation of again heat is also not so proper as compared to the overhead conductors. However, there are no problem of sag in the cables and the sag problem is in your overhead transmission line, but if the cable gets too hot, it is very much heated, the insulation will begin to deteriorate and may fail in future. Other restriction is due to the stability limit. So, this was related to your thermal limit. For long trans line, power transfer can be expressed in terms of surge impedance loading of the line as we saw in the previous slide. If the line is lossless, that is gamma is equal to your J beta and beta is your phase constant. Both side voltage are in both voltage side here means V r and your V s means receiving end and sending end voltages magnitudes are same. Then we can write this receiving end power will be equal to your V s V r 
z characteristic sin delta uh, sin hyperbolic gamma l. What is this gamma? As I said, this gamma is nothing but your alpha here plus j beta. So, your gamma l it is alpha l plus j beta l and this beta l is nothing but your theta and this is called the line angle, electrical angle of the line. So, we can write this receiving end power p will be your this z c sin hyperbolic gamma l multiplied by sin delta. Again, this delta is your load angle, the voltage is the phase uh, voltage angle between V r and V s. This can be again replaced if it is lossless means your this alpha part is 0, then we can go for this and this beta l is again sometimes called as the theta and we can represent this whole because this is lossless. So, jet V square upon jet C V psi it is a P S I L. So, then it is a P S I L sin delta upon beta l. This so that if line length is increased, if you are increasing the line length, beta is increased and P r is decreased means your receiving end power is decreased means if you are keep on increasing the length your the power transfer over the line will be keep on decreasing. So, what does it mean if you are going for long transmission line it is not possible to transmit more power due to this limitation of the transmission line. We will see again in the medium however, in this is case of the long transmission line as I said if the length is increased this beta l it is again the theta is increased and therefore, the P r will be reduced. However, in the medium transmission line the voltage drop is the main criteria for the transferring maximum power over the line. A line has a current rating which provides the safe operation and above which it may not recommend it for the operation especially for the long duration of the time. Now, you can say this is a length of the line you see this figure and this is your P over P S I L. So, this is your stability uh, thermal limit of the transmission line and this is your stability limit. So, you can say the stability limit as I said once length of the line is keep on increasing this P r which we represented in terms of P S i l here sin delta divided by sin beta l. So, this P r here divided by P S l here it is a function of line length. So, this is you can say keep on decreasing if your line length is increased this value is decreasing and this is due to the stability limits this is basically due to the stability equation. However, thermal limit is independent on the length of the line it is constant here. Now, you can see from this if your line is short let us suppose less you can see which for this length which limit is imposing it is your thermal limit is here means you cannot load your line more than its thermal limit. But if your transmission line is long let us suppose at this length you can see your first limiting criteria is your stability limit. So, thermal limit is very very far off from your stability limit. So, the long transmission lines are restricted due to the stability limit your short line transmission line is restricted due to the thermal limit. Suppose, if you want you have a and always this thermal limit is more you can say the stability limit especially for the longer transmission line. However, in the medium transmission voltage line and medium transmission line length length is less then the voltage drop is the governing criteria. Since line are designed to operate at certain voltage level due to the uh, due to the string insulators and the clearance sometimes rating is also given in terms of the power which is a multiplication of the current and voltage extra high voltage lines normally operate near to the unity power factor and the rating of the line in MBA is the same as in megawatt. In the transmission line always this value uh, this power factor is almost unity or it is very close to unity and again it is very difficult the power factor in the transmission line at each point is different. Let us say why the power factor in a transmission line is changing with the length. To see this let us we have a transmission line here this is a long transmission line this is the bus 1 and the bus 2. What happens here this voltage of this is let us suppose V 2 and this is here V 1 and let us take here as a reference angle is 0 and we have here delta. We know that there are the two fundamentals of power system 
the power system transmission, the real power that is P will flow from higher delta to low delta. Means here your real power will be flowing like this and that is your P. But your the reactive power Q flows from high V to low V. Now, if the both voltages are same, still there are possibility that the reactive power flow direction will be different. Means the voltage profile of this line may be like this. Let us suppose here. What happens here? In this case, your reactive power that is higher voltage, it is flowing like this, your Q, and here also it is flowing like this. However, this P will be the unidirectional. Now, you can say the power factor here at this end, this reactive power is coming here. So, it is leading here, it is lagging here. Again, if you will take another condi uh, condition here of the high voltage, this means low loading of the line. In this case, here this reactive power from higher voltage here, sorry, it is going like this and this is from here. So, you can see in this case, the different scenario is appearing. So, it depends upon the loading of the transmission line and again the loading gives as in previous slides I showed that the voltage profile over the transmission line at each point the voltage will be different and what will happen the reactive power flow will be also the different and once reactive power will be different normally this real power is constant only the losses will be coming to the picture. So, the power factor at each point will be different because we have here P constant plus this Q and Q is keep on changing throughout the transmission line. Why it is changing? Because due to the capacitances here, those are formed. Means, this capacitance is generating reactive power and the here there is the inductor and that is a loss. So, due, due to this variability, the power factor throughout the transmission line, it is keep on changing. And of course, no doubt, this power factor is normally is very close to unity here. It may be leading or lagging, but it is sometimes it is let us suppose 0.98 or 0.95 almost close to unity. We saw this line is if it is very long, suppose now again the length of the line is not in your control. Because suppose your generating station is very far end from your load center, then you have to build a transmission line and the power must be evacuated taken from the generating station to your load center for the proper utilization. So, the line length sometimes it is not in your control. So, you have to go for that length of the line and we saw that the stability criteria is the major concern for the long transmission line. So, how you can improve that? How you can improve that stability limit? Because if line length is more for the same 400 kV transmission line, if the length is 10, 10 kilometer, it is possible that we can flow more than 600 kilometers, uh, 600 megawatts. Sorry. But if the line length is more, let us suppose more than 400 ki kilometer, then power cannot be more than 500 megawatt. So, you can see now if line length is more, you cannot transmit more power. Therefore, what will happen? You have to go for some mechanism and that mechanism is only way that we can change the electrical characteristic of the line. Because physical characteristic you cannot change. Physical characteristic means that your L and C means your inductance and the capacitance form once the line is designed you cannot change. By, by, by the way of doing something in this network a transmission line, if you are changing the electrical characteristic that is known as the compensation of the transmission line. So, the compensation means the modification of electrical characteristic I said not the physical of transmission line in order to increase its power transfer capability which satisfying the following fundamental requirements of the transmission. First fundamental is the major synchronous machines must remain stably in the synchronous. Means all the synchronous generators must be in the synchronous. There should not be any loose and loss of the synchronous synchronous machines. Voltage must be kept near to the iterated value, nominal value, what is the operating voltage. First requirement is necessary to maintain all the generators. Means major synchronous machines must remain uh, remain stably in synchronous, it is uh, your first criteria and this so that it is necessary to maintain all the generators and synchronous condensers as well to be in the synchronous. This is the requirement of stability of the system. Requirement is for the healthy operation of the system. In the system, there may be under voltage which may be due to the high load current or due to the fault in the system. However, in the over voltage may also occur in the system due to the fault due to the switching and both under voltages and high over voltages may lead to the unreliable 
supply of the system. Then what we have to do? Then the main objective of the compensation of the system are to produce a substantially flat voltage profile at all the levels of the power transmission to improve the stability of the system and to meet the economical way for reactive power requirement of the system. Again, the, there are the various types of compensation techniques. I am not going much detail about the compensation because you may read, you may learn these things in the different again courses. So, if compensation is done for the changing the characteristic impedance of the line, as I said the characteristic impedance if you are changing that is your Z naught or Z C, then it is called your surge impedance compensation or Z naught compensation. It is also possible to change the electrical length and the electrical length as I said the beta. If you are changing the beta, then it is called the line length compensation or the theta compensation. So, basically based on the parameter that you are going to change in the that one by the compensation, it is defined at the Z naught compensation or theta compensation. The transmission line are compensated by the different sections, means it is complete line if you are compensating in that way and other possibility that you can go by section by section and this is known as the compensation by section. Compensation can also be classified according to the device control operation means it may be your active and the passive. In the active compensation, control variables are continuous and the voltage is maintained such that such as static wire compensation. Means static wire compensators are nothing but here at the bus, here we use the static wire compensator and it will try to maintain the voltage here by varying its impedance. So, that is a your active compensation. In the passive compensation, the quantities are not continuously controlled. For example, if you are using the series capacitance in the transmission line here, the voltage is not controlled. And also, if you are using here some reactors, here reactor is not going for the how much voltage is there. It is depending that how much x it is giving, it depends upon the x is fixed, how much reactive power it is giving, it depends upon the voltage of this bus. Sometimes the compensation is also classified in terms of the whether which type of compensation means whether you are putting in the series or you are putting in the shunt. So, in the series compensation means we are going to put this device in the series for example, the TCSC here your transmission line is there. If you are putting your capacitance here, then it is in series of the line, then it is called your series compensation. However, if you are compensating let us suppose you are putting here a reactor you are using here, then it is in shunt of this line and this is called your shunt compensation. So, again the sometimes we will see in other uh, lectures that the various type of facts controllers. Now, with the help of the power electronics devices, we can achieve these compensation mechanism techniques very efficiently and then we can have the more performance, better performance of the transmission lines by using power electronics devices and that is called the facts controller flexible AC transmission systems and those are very very nowadays popular. So, here the reactor means as I said it is shunt then it is shunt if it is in series series if you are monitoring the regulated voltage here the voltage of this bus and this by controlling what is SVC you see the SVC is nothing but here it is your inductor and then we use the power electronic device here and then it is here by wiring basically by firing up this thyristors we can change the inductance of this and we have the capacitances here and they are the switchable capacitance. So, we can again by measuring this voltage and giving the firing pulse to the th to the thyristors we can change this L and thereby this whole X here of this SVC is basically variable and by varying we can provide the reactive power support accordingly. So, this is basically uh, your SVC and this is called your active compensation. In the passive as I said here the transmission line to avoid the over voltages I use here one reactor here and one reactor here. That reactor is not maintaining the voltage of this bus. Means here simply we have to put here some x and this reactive power generation is here, it is nothing but your V square upon x at this point. 
So, if your voltage is less, it will provide less reactive power, no doubt. And if voltage is more, it will provide more reactive power again, how much x means how much x it is going to be here. So, this is your called uh, passive compensation. And already I discussed here this various compensation techniques, again the Z naught compensation, theta compensation, here Z naught is nothing but here you can change your Z naught is your L by C, means you can modify it by putting some extra device. For example, if your transmission line here, your transmission line is this, you are putting here XC, uh, XC here, what is effectively happening? Your XL was there of the transmission line, now your this XL minus XC, you have a new parameter. Means here, if you are seeing here, this we can write, it is nothing but your XL upon XC, nothing else. So, effectively what we are doing, we are changing here the series part and then we are getting the different value of Z naught. We can reduce Z naught by using here X naught reduction. So, this is in total means we can compensate the line to improve the performance of the line and thereby we can improve the stability of the lines and then these are the various. So, in this lecture what I discussed, I discussed the transmission line, we saw the various limits, thermal limits voltage limits and the stability limits and how we can improve this that by using the compensation we can improve the thermal stability limit and that with this end of this lecture. Thank you.